Well, good morning. We're talking with Martin V. Ricardo, and the book is called Liquid Dreams of Vampires. Good morning. Good morning, Esther. And uh, you're over there in Chicago, I, I, I suppose, enjoying the wonderful Chicago weather. Yeah, we have a nice dreary day today. <laughs> it's a nice Halloween day, right? Yeah, you can say that. Great yeah. for the Halloween season. Nice and dark out there. Okay, Liquid Dreams of Vampires. Now, I didn't get a chance to, to uh, read it completely, but... Uh, for what I look through it, um, it, it, it looks kind of like, uh, uh, I guess, the sexual fantasies of uh, that people have about vampires and, and other things. Well, well, what, the erotic what... aspects are certainly there, but the vampire has many dimensions to it. It's interesting that centuries ago, vampires started out as a terrifying superstition of the dead returning and attacking the living. But over the centuries, it's evolved into a dark romantic fantasy for many people. Really? Oh, yes. Uh, there's a lot of eroticism, a lot of glamour. There are people who just want to be overwhelmed by a romantic figure, a mysterious stranger who dwells in a world of candles, moonlight, and gothic surroundings. There are those who want to be just captivated and overwhelmed by the animal magnetism of this otherworldly lover. Huh. Now, see, you know, when I when I watch the, the old movies and stuff of uh, vampires and... I saw a, a female vampire. She always kind of scared me a bit with the with the teeth, but you know, uh, <laughs> didn't the teeth and the eyes were always kind of strange too on, on vampires, and, and the blood on the side of the mouth that that right. kind of. Right. Are people actually were intrigued by things like that? Well, that's the interesting part of it. People are frightened by the vampire, but because of the strange nature of the vampire, they are both frightened and attracted to it, and that's one of huh. the things that surprises people about the vampire image, such as the uh, actor Bela Lugosi had an overwhelming response from female admirers. Mm. He even had marriage proposals uh, mailed out to him. Tremendous amount of fan mail for many different vampire actors, such as Jonathan Frid, uh, who played Barnabas in the Dark Shadows TV yeah, series, yeah. Uh, for Christopher Lee, who played Dracula in many of the Hammer films. And so even though people are frightened by it, frightened by the T's and the eyes and this overwhelming nature of the vampire, still there's a strange, compelling attraction. That's one of the intriguing things about vampires that make them different from other creatures like the Frankenstein monster or the mummy. They're kind of the uh, attractive monsters uh, in the horror world. Okay, all right. You know, you, you mentioned one of one of my favorite old uh, soap operas, too, with the Barnabas Collins, the Dark Shadows thing. That was... Uh, yes, that's... Uh, that was very unique. That was a very unique uh, thing. It was like the first, that was the first soap opera, the only soap opera that ever dealt with the unknown, so to speak. Right. It still is unique. It still is a one-of-a-kind type of soap opera where they brought in all these gothic elements, a lot of the kind of creatures you'd see in the universal horror films to kind of transform them into sometimes romantic figures, but particularly Barnabas the Vampire. The show was almost uh, ready to be canceled when they introduced the vampire, and then suddenly there was a huge surge of popular sure. interest in the show. Also, the music uh, became very popular, too, the Quentin's theme and the kind of Barnabas' uh, thing. Oh, yes, that's Weird. even been re-released in the, the 1990s. Yeah. Many people still play that, and they've got all the old episodes on videotape. You go to some video stores, you'll see a whole rack of uh, videos just on the old Dark Shadow series. People watch the whole thing from beginning to end. And I've rented them. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm one of them, yeah. Okay, uh, out of curiosity, what, what made you uh, interested in vampires in the first place? Well, I heard a lecture in the... 1970s by a writer named Leonard Wolf. He wrote a book called A Dream of Dracula, covering a lot of the interesting mystique of the vampire. And I became intrigued. I also uh, became fascinated by one of the first vampire movies I saw called Dracula Has Risen from the Grave with Christopher Lee as Dracula. And he was just so powerful and majestic on the screen that I suddenly just developed a strong interest that grew over the years since the 1970s. I've been researching and writing and lecturing on the subject of vampires. Uh, I had a couple of books out in the early 80s, and now I have my new book, Liquid Dreams of Vampires, where I just decided to collect all these different strange dreams and fantasies of people to try and reveal what it is about the vampire that people are attracted to. Now, where'd you find these people to, to, to write your book as far as their dreams? Well, there is so much interest in vampires right now that there are over a dozen different vampire fan organizations oh, okay. and publications where I just put a little notice in there saying, please send me your vampire dreams and fantasies. And it took me about six years to put all the material together and write it up and finally get it published. But uh, I had hundreds and hundreds of different accounts sent to me from people, some of them very strange, bizarre, otherworldly, <laughs> but all of them showing a certain fascination with the vampire image. Okay, okay. Do you have any of your own... Uh, fantasies about uh, 
the vampires or, or, or dreams or anything like that? Or, or, or... I've just had a few. I'm the kind of person where I don't have uh, very strong memories of my dreams, but I do remember one dream I had where I was like in an underground bunker situation and I was kind of locked in there where I knew there were some vampires wandering around or, or potentially uh, ready to attack. It was kind of like a... Uh, a scenario from the movie Alien, only with vampires instead of the alien creature. And so that was pretty scary. And I've just had little bits and pieces I remember. But I can't say that I have any strong personal fantasies, but I am very interested in the vampire because I have written on different aspects. I've written on the old legends. I've written on uh, uh, different uh, experiences people have had and uh, how uh, how uh, they just see the vampire in so many different aspects and so many different ranges. So I've covered the, the field and from many different uh, aspects. Okay, now did you say you spent five, five or six years to, to get all this stuff uh, together? Actually, from the time I first started collecting the material to the time the book was published, it was about six years altogether. Okay. Now, um, out of all these different ones, as far as ones public, either published in the book or not, uh, can you name like, a couple of your favorites or just briefly kind of go over a little bit of what they're uh, about? Sure, sure. Uh, well, I got some really strange ones. I had uh, one gentleman write me about a dream where he was up to his knees in a room filled with blood, and the blood was swirling all around him, and that when he leaned his head back, droplets of blood would fall on his face. I thought that was kind of strange. Another one where a woman wrote me that she had dreamed she was in a car with her mother, brother, and her brother's girlfriend, and the car was in an accident where the three other passengers all had their heads decapitated. Mm. And she took the heads after the accident, poured the blood out of them into a cauldron, and she heard her little brother say that all the blood had to be mixed together into a oneness of eternal love. Now that's you know, so, give that's you a little weird. sampling of the kind of strange yeah. dreams people send me on this. But yeah, they, they can be very bizarre. Now, uh, as, as far as far as the most most uh, erotic, I guess, dream what was okay. Can or can you say that on the radio? I guess, <laughs> I guess I don't that's know a if question. I can really tell you about the most erotic <laughs> dreams that are in the book. But there was one woman who told me that uh, in her dream she was like in a glass case with her boyfriend, and she would bite him all over his body, where he would just have little driplets of blood, and she would lick off the blood while there would be a huge audience of people uh, all around watching uh, this demonstration of uh, vampirism. Okay. So, yeah, so some of the dreams can be pretty explicit, can be pretty wild. Uh, that's the interesting thing about the dreams. Most of them, uh, or yeah, the very large portion of them, have to do with the vampire as a uh, stranger and lover, somebody coming into their lives and overwhelming them, sometimes coming into a bedroom window and kind of seducing them in a, uh, another worldly way. So that is certainly a very strong element to the dreams. Okay. Now, do you think this, uh, the, the, what, Tom Cruise and, um, um, what was it, Brad Pitt, the vampire movie? I can't remember the name Interview of it. Interview with the Vampire. Yeah. And they had that kind of a kind of erotic scenes in that also as far as, you know, bringing actual women up there and uh, and killing them on stage in front of the people. It was, it was kind of a weird movie. Yeah, but, it uh, combined that element of terror, of very disturbing qualities with the eroticism. Yeah. But other movies have done that as well in the, the 19... Uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s, uh, Christopher Lee was creating that kind of image where uh, the women were actually responding to his bite as, as if they, they were uh, very stimulated by what was going on, as yeah. if they really liked being bitten. And uh, that has progressed through the years uh, where uh, many of the vampire movies, I'm even thinking of low-budget films like the Count Yorga films, where uh, it, Vampire came across as a very seductive, even though still frightening creature. But certainly, the interview with the vampire added a lot. I mean, you take two of the uh, the most handsome box office stars and make them vampires. Certainly, a lot of uh, women are going to be attracted to that kind of image, <laughs> even though they were also very frightening and yeah. terrifying creatures on the screen. Yeah. Okay. Um, in your book, it says something about. Uh, um, um, vampire dreams becoming reality. Right. Now, um, what do you mean by that? I actually, they actually people, what, fulfill their dreams? Uh, well, that, there's different levels to that. In that particular chapter, I'm talking about people who have dreams of vampires and then something in their real life, the real world, from the dream seems to come through. There are uh, quite a few people I mentioned in the book who said they've dreamed of being bitten by a vampire, and when they woke up, they found bite marks on their neck, <laughs> and sometimes oh even uh, stains of blood. 
And so they tend to think that maybe there was something to the dream more than just fantasy, that something really happened to them in the night. Now, there's other explanations for that. Uh, there's a possibility they themselves may have reached up to their neck during the dream and scratched themselves, or they may have uh, cut themselves in some kind of medallion in their sleep, and they incorporated in, in the dream that image of a vampire biting them. Uh, there just could have been marks there they never noticed before. There could be all kinds of other explanations, but some people really feel that something happened to them in their dream that came through into their real life. But even stranger than that, there are some people who've said that the vampire they saw in their dream appeared in their real life. There's a case of one gentleman in the book who said that uh, he dreamed that he was in a nightclub where he met a female vampire, and this female vampire was telling him about the possibility of really becoming a vampire, what its what real possibilities are. And then he said he woke up from the dream, but when he woke up, he saw this female vampire sitting on the bed next to him. And that eventually, uh, talking a little bit to her while she was there on the bed, she leaned over to bite him, and then he just kind of blacked out. He just kind of uh, drifted right back into uh, some kind of sleep again. Wimp. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, uh, uh, of course, it, he, he thinks it might have been the mesmerizing power of the, uh, the female vampire. Uh, even okay. stranger. It gets even more strange after that. Uh, he said that in his real life, after that, he would be in public places, and he would look up, and in the distance, he would see this female vampire. He would immediately get up and run toward her, but then she'd be gone. And he said this happened to him a number of times. So when we talk about uh, dreams coming into reality, yeah, some strange things have been sent to me, some strange stories. Now, you, are, have any of these people been checked out as far as uh, whether they're kind of like on the edge? Well, no, I just basically have to take their word. I mean, these are people who seem sincere. They write me their accounts, their stories. Uh, and, you know, some of them have said they would swear on the Bible that what they're telling me is true. Now, everyone has to decide if they want to take it with a grain of salt or with a clove of garlic. That's their choice. But <laughs> I'm just basically giving the accounts that people sent me. And it, you can take it or leave it. They do seem pretty strange at, at times. Okay, all right, because I mean, you, you think that uh, people that believe in vampires, I mean, you know, the Bible wouldn't probably wouldn't focus too much on them anyway, but uh, anyway, have you, have you ever found any really true blood drinkers in your studies at all? Or? Well, of course, in fact, I have a whole chapter dealing with mortal vampires and blood drinkers, right. and quite often these are people who have just become so fascinated with the vampire image that they want to experience it, they want to live it in their own way, and many of these people do develop a real compulsion, a real craving to drink blood. Sometimes yeah. it is so strong that, uh, that it just becomes overwhelming in their lives. Now, these are not people who attack others. They do not force anyone to get their uh, blood from them. Uh, this is not any kind of assault, but they get voluntary donors. They take just very small amounts of blood from the donors, and they describe all kinds of different experiences. Some describe it as being like a drug high. Some describe it as being a sense of strong uh, connection and intimacy with a person. Uh, others uh, just to say it just has a lot of personal meaning for them to just take these uh, little drops of blood from uh, other people, usually partners, usually uh, romantic partners or mates in some way. And so, yeah, the, uh, the compulsion uh, to uh, want to be a vampire can be very strong in some people. Huh. That's, that's weird. You know, I, I tell you, one of the most erotic vampire movies I think I, I've ever seen was the one with, uh, Kat, was it Catherine Duvall? And the Dave, Hunger, right? David Bowie, yeah, The Hunger. Catherine Deneuve. Deneuve, right. okay, that, that's it. Um, and uh, and I can't remember the other, Su Susan S Sarandon? Uh, yeah, that's right. That's yeah, okay. Susan Sarandon. Now that was, that was uh, okay, of course it had a little <laughs> lesbian action there in the whole bit. I mean, that was that was very a uh, very erotic uh, oh, vampire movie. And you see, that's another aspect of the vampire, is that the vampire movie and vampire novels can imply all kinds of alternative sexuality without having to specifically uh, state that's what's going on. In other words, it's just supposed to be the, uh, the drinking of blood from one person to another. But there's all kinds of sexual and erotic uh, intimations involved with all this. So a lot of people could watch The Hunger, and so, there's some people who wouldn't even catch on, you know, how much of the erotic element is going on, at least not right. catch on consciously, even though they're being affected subconsciously by mm -hmm. what's happening. So that's a, another interesting aspect of the vampire that I cover in uh, a section on forbidden passions. Uh, many, uh, many different things can happen in a vampire movie that can affect us on a subconscious level. Now, have you ever got any, any letters on uh, some people that were you, you might have thought of were a little on the on the edge, and uh, you you were a little worried for their for, for them proceeding a little too far? Well, certainly. In fact, uh, as I was saying, 
some people become so obsessed with the whole idea of drinking blood and being like a vampire that it, it has negatively affected their lives that to a tremendous extent I've had at least three women write me telling me that their husbands left them because of their desire to drink blood. Sure. So yes, yeah, certainly people have gone over the edge. Some people have uh, uh, just uh, become so uh, compelled by uh, this desire to drink blood that uh, it has just totally disrupted their lives. So yeah, the negative things can happen. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to finishing your book. Great. I've been reading it. I'm looking forward to finishing your book so I can... Uh, uh, I've got. So, I, I had so many different different uh, haunting books to read that I, uh, I've oh, been sure. skimming through all of them. But uh, Halloween I'm, season has a lot of possibilities. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's true. This is true. But uh, the name of the book is Liquid Dreams of Vampires, Martin V. Ricardo, and uh, of course you can get your books at Barnes and Noble, or they can call one eight hundred the Moon. Right. Now that that see that number always scared me though, I mean, because you know the Moon 